Hello, marine biology students. In this video, we're going to discuss marine birds and non cetacean marine mammals. So, seabirds are birds that nest on land, but feed exclusively or in part on marine organisms. Like mammals, seabirds are able to maintain a constant body temperature. They are homeotherms. And they do this through metabolic means, making them endotherms. They have feathers coated with oil from glandular secretions to help waterproof their body. As opposed to marine reptiles, they have hard-shelled eggs that provide more protection than the leathery shells of reptiles. Many seabirds nest in large colonies, on cliffs, isolated islands, low shrubs or trees, or even on the ground. Some species are monogamous. and mate for life. Complex behaviors include rituals such as selecting a mate, protection of young, and long migrations. Penguins are the most radically adapted of all seabirds. They are flightless and have flipper-like wings. They spend a great deal of time searching for prey at sea. Most species live in Antarctica. or sub-Antarctic regions, and in this case by sub-Antarctic we mean closer to the equator, but only a bit. They are adapted to cold water with a layer of fat and trapping of air within their feathers. In penguins, males and females share parenting responsibilities. Other types of seabirds include tube noses, such as albatrosses and petrels, pelicans, cormorants, frigate birds, gulls, terns, and many species of shorebirds. There's wide variety in the feeding habits of these seabirds. With the beak shape often giving clues as to what the feeding habit would be. We see some birds feed on surface organisms, others can dive and pursue organisms underwater, and some seabirds actually even target other seabirds trying to make them regurgitate their last meal and eating the fish that they had already eaten. Let's talk a bit about marine mammals. Mammals are homeotherms and endotherms, so they keep a constant body temperature, they get their body heat from their metabolism. Other mammalian features include hair. Although this is reduced in some species, such as the cetaceans, which we'll see in a moment, and layers of blubber, for insulation. Storing excess energy in the form of adipose tissue in the skin is a uniquely mammalian trait. Mammals are viviparous with a placenta to provide nutrients to the embryo. A uniquely mammalian trait is that the placenta is derived of embryonic tissue as opposed to maternal tissue although it is the mother's system that provides all the nutrients necessary for the embryo to grow and develop. Another unique characteristic of mammals are mammary glands. Which produce milk for the young. Mammals have a large brain in relation to their body size, and they also have complex behaviors. There are four orders within the mammals which are considered to be marine mammals, and not all of them are exclusively marine, although many of them are. The first are the pinnipeds, order Pinnipedia. These are seals, sea lions, and walruses. Next, the carnivores, in order Carnivora.
These include sea otters, the marine otter, and polar bears. Next, we have the Cyrenians, order Cyrenia. These are the dugongs and manatees, and are named after the sirens in Greek legend that would tempt sailors to the sea. It's believed that sightings of these manatees and dugongs inspired the original tales of mermaids, creatures who had the body of a woman but the tail of a fish. And then lastly, we have the Cetitians, order Cetitia, which include whales, dolphins, and porpoises. So we'll start by discussing the pinnipeds. They are predators. feeding mostly on fish, squid, and shellfish. Most breed on land and return to sea after giving birth. They prefer breeding. Near shallow water and abundant food. They typically live in cool or cold water due to the presence of blubber. The exception are the monk seals, of which there are Hawaiian and Mediterranean monk seals, although they are endangered, and Caribbean monk seals have not been seen since the 1950s. In pinnipeds, their forelimbs and hind limbs are adapted as flippers for swimming, and there are 35 distinct species. Here we see sea lions and seals. They are similar and yet distinct from each other, in that Sea lions have external ears, whereas seals do not. Sea lions are able to rotate their legs so that they can move somewhat on land, whereas seals are not able to use their hind limbs on land. Walruses are also in this order, Pinnipedia. Odobenus rosmanus is their binomial nomenclature. They have an absence of external ears. Both males and females possess large tusks. But in general, adult males are slightly larger than the females, with longer and stouter tusks. On land, walruses are capable of rotating their hind flippers to walk on all fours, as in sea lions, although they spend most of their time in water. Their diet consists mainly of bivalve mollusks, although they may occasionally feed on other benthic invertebrates like worms, snails, sea cucumbers, squids, and crabs. Some will occasionally prey on fish, such as polar cod, and they might even scavenge on seal carcasses. Walruses are found in the Arctic Sea, on both the Pacific and Atlantic sides, but they are entirely northern hemisphere. So a walrus is never going to be encountering a penguin. They typically stay in relatively shallow water and they migrate with the pack ice. They will sometimes aggregate in small rocky islands and coasts during the summer when the pack ice is mostly melted. The females can delay implantation of a fertilized embryo until a time where the gestation period will result in a desirable time to give birth. A mature female gives birth approximately every two years, with copulation or intercourse and nursing of the young occurring in water. Our next group of mammals are the carnivores, the otters and polar bear. Sea otters and hydrolutris have very fine, dense fur coats. This fur coat ends up trapping air within it for insulation, which is essential because sea otters have no blubber. They are the smallest truly marine mammal, with anterior feet with small retractable claws, and posterior feet which are broad and webbed. They have a metabolic rate higher than most mammals of similar size, so they must consume large quantities of food. Adult sea otters may eat as much as 9 kilograms or 20 pounds of food each day. This food includes sea urchins, crabs, abalone, clams, mussels, octopuses, and fishes. There are three species or races of Inhydrolutris. 
and small differences between them. There are the Asian sea otter, which is found in northern Japan and Siberia, the Alaskan sea otter, and the California sea otter. Sea otters are typically found in waters close to shore, although the Alaskan sea otters have a greater tendency to come to shore than the California sea otter does. Sea otters are important predators. In giant kelp beds, regulating the number of sea urchins that graze on the kelp, they can play a similar role in seagrass meadows as well. They are an endangered species brought almost to extinction by hunters for their valuable pelts. Now a much lesser known otter is the marine otter, Lantra felina. They spend most of their time on rocky shores, but feed on small marine invertebrates. They live on the Pacific coast of temperate South America. They are also endangered. due to hunting and habitat loss. The last of our marine carnivores is the polar bear, Ursus maritimus. Polar bears are the largest land carnivore. Although technically they're marine because they can spend the entirety of life either at sea or on ice over the sea, polar bears are threatened by decreasing ice pack in the Arctic Sea. They have a thick fur coat that appears white in coloration but the hair on it is actually translucent. Polar bears have smaller ears and longer necks than other bears. These are adaptations to low Arctic temperatures. In polar bears, there is sexual dimorphism and adult males are larger than adult females. Adult polar bears need an average of two kilograms of fat per day in order to maintain their body weight. Their diet includes mostly ringed and bearded seals. But they are also known to feed on other seal species, walrus, narwhals, beluga whales, whale carcasses, fishes, birds, eggs, berries, and kelp. They have a gestation period of about eight months, including about a four-month delayed implantation in order for the cubs to be born in the oncoming spring. Mother polar bears provide milk for their cubs for about two years. Our next group of marine mammals are the Cyrenians, the dugongs, and manatees. Of manatees, there are three species. Trachecus manatus, which is the West Indian manatee, often found entering fresh waters along the coasts of Florida and the West Indies. Trichicus senegalensis, which is the West African manatee, and Trichicus inunguis, the Amazonian manatee, which stays primarily in fresh water. Related to the manatees are dugongs. Which are found in East Asia to Western Pacific Islands. Here we see an illustration of an adult manatee. As we saw in that illustration, manatees have front flippers, but no rear limbs, and they have a wide paddle-like horizontal tail. They're primarily herbivores. Consuming sea grasses and freshwater vegetation. In fact, Manatees consume from 4 to 9% of their body weight in wet vegetation daily. That can be in the order of tens to even hundreds of pounds for an average adult manatee. Manatees may reach around 4.5 meters in length and 600 kilograms in weight. All four species mentioned are endangered or threatened. Especially the dugong. One of the threats to manatees is that they have a very slow reproduction rate.
which it takes about five years to mature, and they give birth to a single calf every two to five years, after a gestation period of about a year. And that concludes our discussion on marine birds and non cetitian marine mammals. Now, before our next video, I'd like you to think about, is there anyone who doesn't think about dolphins and whales when they hear about marine biology? Probably not, and we'll talk about that in our next video.